looking to see if there's any, any imperfections in the body that we want to fix. And some of them are things that there's, there's a little bit of an indentation in this fender, but I don't know if that indentation is there because it's not, it doesn't have the tension of being bolted to the body. And that's what we're deciding whether we fix that now, you know, and maybe it doesn't need it. I think we're probably better off painting it, getting it on the car. If we need to, we can do paintless dent repair, push that panel out a little bit because it's really subtle. You may never see it, but we know it's there right now. All right. Good there. Got a big wall up in this cool fender. Well, it gets it gets that piece and the two moldings here, and then it looks like there's another emblem here. already on, on the corner. I was just going to move it that way a little bit. Got to get under here. OK. There we go. Now you can slide that that way a little bit. Yeah, now you're about to end up. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a real subtle one right here that I think we should address before we paint this. It's right in here. You can see there's a little little wave in that panel that I don't believe will come out when we tighten it up. I think all this will go away once it's tightened up. The rest of it looks great. But I don't think we need to do anything on this. We got the two moldings going here okay. with that panel. And there's a molding here. I think those will pull that back out. But that I don't think will fix. I think we need to address, yeah, just blocking the top of that fender a little bit. I think that other one will pull that back out, and then there's an emblem here. Can you see that one? Unwrap that one. Unwrap this one? Yeah. So watch, let me hold those two. Yeah, everything's, everything's right underneath that. I think you'll never see it. But I think that one and that one you'll see. We've got all the parts of the DeSoto. We've got color on them. And now what we're doing is we're mocking it up. It's spaced apart, but everything will be in the right position. We've got to get the hood on. And then Steve and David will get the final coat of color on the car. So everything is matched. It's exactly lined up the way it needs to be. So when we clear the car, none of the colors have a difference. You know, it could be just the difference of the spray gun being a couple inches away if you paint the door and paint the fender. We get it lined up this way, they'll put a final coat of color so everything's a dead match. Then we'll clear everything, get it rubbed out, put it on the chassis, get it on the street again.
Okay, what we're working on right now is a, one of the projects. It's a 55 DeSoto. Um, the last time, probably when you've seen it, was it was kind of in base. We kind of based it out to kind of see where it was and rebased it and put two more wet coats of this 90 line on here and got it all laid out and then it got cleared. It's got two coats of clear on it, which is a two coat clear from BASF. It's the 923210 clear. And uh, so now what we're doing right now is we're color sanding it with 800 getting it all flattened back out. And we got a two-tone white that we have to put down the side of this thing. And the roof has already got the white on it. Um, it got done after the body had got done. And then we did the roof. And now we're back down to the sides of this. And we're gonna base it all in white and take all the paper back off, clean it up really, really good and remask what we have to mask. And we're gonna flow coat two more coats clear of 210 and we're gonna lay it out like glass. weird color because it kind of looks pink kind of looks bronze but it's got a super super fine metallic in it so it's like all the old cars like from the 60s and 70s and earlier than that all these all these uh silvers were super fine and they used to call them they call them micas so when you put it on really wet it never had a drop coat on it so when you do it wet it'll keep the metallic to lay down super flat. So you won't have any metallics dancing. It's just got this really silky silver kind of color. The way it works out is kind of like, if I don't feel it, I don't mess with it. You know, because if you're not, if you don't got your head in the game, it's kind of, you know, you can go one way to another and just, you know, ruin something where it's like, you know, I based it out and uh, last week and I kind of let it set on it for a day or, you know, till the next day to make sure I felt right and looked at it, put the lights on it and stuff. So there's a, there's, there's a lot to it because it's a one, t you know, one chance deal on it or you're redoing it. So we're going to take the trunk off and actually sand this off the car and then we'll flow coat this off the car because I want to get inside this whole jam in here and make this all super wet as well. So. I don't have to reach all the way over the trunk. I can just hit the back underneath the window, the window seal right here. It's just easy to grab 
and then clear out the sides and then come down to the middle of this. And I, you know, it's more controllable to make it super wet without running it and trying to gloss everything out because you don't want to go back in here and color sand into this stuff. So if I was to paint the outside and put a coat on it, I would always do the jams last. I didn't care about the overspray on the outside because this is what you don't want to sand and polish. The outside's easy. You can sand it, polish it. It's a little trick to it. Yeah, as soon as we get it ready for the white, um, I'll bring the moldings in and I'll mock those up a little bit and to find the breaking point because it's got a weird breaking point down here where usually it'll go straight like in a 45, but I think it kicks to like a 30 degree down in this area right here. So I'll bring the moldings in and I'll, I'll check everything before we pull a tape line and then we'll have it all masked up for the white. Come on in.